Guys, this is Dr. Lior Barel, and today I want to talk about Doom Eternal. So a lot of people are seeing it right now on GameStop up for pre-order. Uh, is that the right decision is the, the question that's here. First off, I do think they're going to give out a demo. I pray to God they're going to give out a demo. But I'm going to just get into this right now. First off, Panic Button uh, is going to obviously take over you know, for n the Nintendo Switch. I am extremely glad about this move. I think that getting Panic Button involved in it is extremely well, especially after they released Doom and, uh, what do you call it? They ported Doom and uh, Wolfenstein. And it, let's face it, guys, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And a lot of people are talking about the 30 frames issue. First off, you know, those who don't own a Nintendo Switch. First off, I'm going to say, rest assured, you have nothing to worry about because the 30 uh, frames on a small screen like this, you're not going to even notice on the go. Now, the only time you are going to notice it is when it's in dock mode. Like I said, if you're playing the Nintendo Switch on a 43-inch monitor, you're probably going to regret it. If you're going to play it on a smaller monitor, you're going to like it. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't really notice much of an effect. If you're used to playing 120 or 60 frames, you are going to notice a dip, and it's probably going to ruin your gaming experience, but it's something you're not going to get used to right away. Uh, I play Doom on the Nintendo Switch, and to be honest with you, I'm used to playing on high frame rates, and I kind of, you know, on the portable mode, I really didn't notice any difference. It kind of felt great. felt very fluid. On the, you know, playing it on a 43-inch monitor, it looked a little more washed out. Obviously, on a big monitor, that's 4K to play on, uh, you know, on the resolution of HD. It's not going to look as good. But I didn't notice much of an, a, a problem that kind of ruined my gaming experience. It kind of felt good. It felt very fluid, and I really liked it. Really enjoyed it. Another thing is with, um, with Doom is, uh, like I told you, I didn't like the colors, really. I thought it should be darker like it was in the original Doom. I don't know how this is going to look, but I think that it's going to look really nice if Panic Button is behind it. I really hope Panic Button decides to port uh, port uh, WWE games and actually make an exclusive game for it. That would be really, uh, for Nintendo, that would be really cool. Uh, but now we're going into, should you pre-order? First off, I'm going to tell you, I don't think you should. If you remember when Doom, uh, the original, was announced, Doom uh, 2016, not the original, but 2016 was announced, they came out with the regular, um, you know, uh, pre-order first. Now, if you're doing it from GameStop, it doesn't matter. Pre-order, and then you can un-pre-order and just pre-order the collector's pack. The collector's pack came shortly after, and I'm willing to bet they are going to come out with a collector's pack. Almost 100%, I'm willing to put my money on it. Uh, and I think that some of the gaming uh, companies, I know like in the stores nearby, are pre-ordering and they're actually taking down credit cards and they're still charging you on the credit cards, uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, interest and all that if you're paying in, in, you know, whatever. So if you're already making payments on the game in these independent gaming stores, you're going to get screwed because guess what? They're going to be coming out with a collector's edition very soon. And I'm willing to bet on it, just like they announced uh, that one uh, for the original uh, Doom 2016. So my advice for you guys would be to hold off on that. I think that you should hold off till it gets, um, you know, till more is going to get announced. Also, I'd like to see more gameplay. Uh, I want to, maybe the beta version looked a little washed out. Now, if you remember in Doom 2016, the same thing happened. The brightness was like kicked up. Everything looked really washed out. So... It wasn't really a game that looked good, but we, uh, we were all looking forward to it, and then it got darker and beautiful, and everything was gorgeous. So maybe maybe this was a display thing. Maybe they just decided to make it bright for everybody in QuakeCon so everybody could see it with bright colors and not complain about I can't see anything. I don't know. So we're, we're going to have to see more uh, in development on this game. But the thing is, I'm going to say wait on it. If you guys are not doing it from GameStop or whatever, and you're doing it on independent stores that are already taking payments right now, my recommendation would be to hold off on it for the time being and wait till the collector's edition comes out if it, and when it comes out. You will be able to do that and, and you know, just get that right away. Now, if you remember, some of them, like the Mega Man uh, 11 edition that came with the Amiibo, right now on GameStop is not available anymore. So I'm happy I did that pre-order 
But remember, in GameStop, you could pre-order and then just un-pre-order and pre-order the collector's edition. So, but in these independent stores, unfortunately, you can't. And I know around my place, I have about eight of them. And I know people already that started doing pre-orders, I saw them, and they're already making credit card payments right now or, you know, uh, monthly payments or whatever till they cover the stuff. They have like these monthly programs, no interest as long as you cover it by six months or whatever if you have $100 wasted, spent or <laughs> wasted, spent or whatever. So there's people doing that right now. So I advise you not to do it and to hold off and wait till the collector's edition is going to be announced uh, before it was announced at around September. I'm going to think my guess is uh, Bethesda, even though they're you know these uh, they wrote on GameStop coming out in December 25th or whatever. That's bull. That's bull crap. They just do that too because when they have no release date, they just put any release date on. I think right now Fallout is going to be a major. Cons- uh, competitor here, uh, you know, c- concern. So they're going to concentrate more on Fallout, and I think they're going to release uh, Rage 2 or whatever they were uh, putting that up. I think the main major focus of that is going to be probably released in March. That's my guess. I think March is going to be a good time that they're going to release Doom. I would have loved to see, I don't know, like earlier or whatever, but it just looks like that's what they're going to be doing. And they're going to release it in March with all of the all the systems, I believe, with the Nintendo Switch uh, and everything are going to be released uh, pretty much all at the same time. So I do believe somewhere along December or maybe even on October, we're going to have a, a release of a special collector's edition with a... You know, like I had the one with the Reverend, as I showed you guys uh, from Doom uh, 2016. You, who knows? Maybe it could be a cyber team and it could be anything. But trust me, you're going to want to wait on it uh, to get the collector's edition. It also came with a bonus pack. It came with a lot of cool things. So I really think that's going to be a big uh, thing. So definitely wait on that. Now, in terms of panic button... Uh, with the Nintendo Switch and people worried about it. I just want to explain it to you. I want you guys, those of you that don't have a Nintendo Switch, to go out and actually get a place where you could play it and see how it is. Look at, you know, I would I would say YouTube videos, some of them are deceiving. You know, that's why I opened this channel to make sure you guys get an in-depth review to see how it really operates. But, um, you know, when you look at Doom and you're looking at it and, and you're playing it somewhere... Play it, give it a try, and you'll see that 30 frames isn't really a problem, especially on portable mode when you're taking it on the go. Now, I can see where it might be a problem if you're, like, saying the dock mode. Let's say you own a PlayStation 4 or a computer, which is the best. The PC is the best. I would rather you guys buy it for a PC than buy it for the Nintendo Switch. If portability is a concern, like, I love the portable factor, you're going to want to actually play it on the portable. You get it for the Nintendo Switch. Now, if you remember, I didn't buy the, uh, the Do- uh, Doom game. Doom 2016 or Wolfenstein because I played the hell out of it on my computer. And I think that they're doing such a good job, Nintendo, that they saw that, that a lot of people didn't buy it because they already got sick of it, even though I'm replaying it over and over again. But they got sick of it because they played everything out on the computer and then it came later on on that. It's a very stupid port to have released if portability isn't a factor. So Nintendo basically, I mean, uh, Bethesda probably saw that and said, wow, look at all that marketing you know, value that we just it disappeared because people played the hell out of it on the on their systems that they don't want to buy it anymore for port for even if the portability was an issue they don't want to buy it anymore. So I could see why Bethesda probably said, you know what, let's release it all in one shot. Uh, and I think right now Panic Button is doing it, and maybe they want to release it, so maybe they'll hold off on it for a while to see how the Nintendo Switch uh, version looks, and then once it happens. It'll be all great, and they'll release them all together. Now, Rage 2, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I'm not really ho- you know, hopeful about it being released really well done, uh, even if Panic Button is in charge. It's going to be quite a hard feat to do because you're dealing with Doom, which has stages, which has loading times, which is good, and then you know, giving buffers, and then moving into an open world of Rage 2, which just keeps going endlessly. I don't know how that's going to operate on the Nintendo Switch, uh, realistically. I want to see how it looks, and I want to see how Panic Button does. Panic Button looks, if there's anybody that could do it, it's definitely Panic Button. Uh, And Bethesda, like I said, is an amazing company and knows their strengths and weaknesses. I just want to see how the heck that develops. But I really think that's also why I have a feeling it's going to all be released in March. Okay, March is going to be the due date for... Doom. Now, you can look back in this video during March and see if I was right or wrong or if it was released earlier and just laugh at me over here. But uh, that's my assumption right now. My assumption is that it's going to be released 
uh, uh, Doom uh, Eternal will be released sometime around March or April, to be honest with you. And I think it's because they want to see the marketing potential. Uh, yeah, they want to see how uh, you know the Nintendo Switch works, and then all together they're going to release it with the Switch together, and they're going to see the marketing potential for the Nintendo Switch, the true marketing potential that it has, because they didn't see it in the original, because everybody played the hell out of it, and people still bought the Doom game. It did great in the numbers of sales, but they're going to want to see how the heck it's done, you know, on the you know all together and see where are they going. Like if a person owns a PlayStation 4 and a Nintendo Switch, where are you going to get that? I own a PlayStation 4 and I own a computer. Most likely, I'm not buying it for the system. I love portable gaming, but again, because of the... I like the fact that it has gyros, but I'm used to playing with a mouse. I'm old school. But a person that's, let's say, used to playing... Uh, you know, on that, or maybe I'll get used to it. I would want to play that baby on the go at one point. And you know what? Maybe I will get it at some point. Even if it go, drops to 30 bucks uh, eventually after it's old, I would want to get that game. But again, nobody would want to get it if they played the hell out of it. Uh, you know, the, the ones that it's not a factor. They're not going to want to buy this game if they're between the PlayStation 4 and a Nintendo Switch unless it's a portable thing, which, let's face it, most of us got the Switch because of the board portability factor. So it'll be really cool to see where they're going, where the customer's going, if it's all released at once. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Are you going to purchase it for the Nintendo Switch? Are you a portable gamer? Uh, is portability a big issue for you? And are you going to purchase that over, let's say, the computer or PlayStation 4, Xbox One? I'd really like to hear about that down below. As always, self-funded here. The only way I ask you guys to help me is by subscribing, hitting that like button, hitting that bell button as many more video reviews to come. I already came out with a past mini-series of how to build a gaming computer. And now, as soon as next month, I'm going to show you how to build an Iron Man and a Star Killer helmet from beginning to end. And then I'm going to show you guys the next mini-series, how to build a gaming slash productivity slash post-production table on the cheap as well. Uh, keep those requests coming, as always, for mini-series. And due to the majority, I will uh, post those up and make it for you. Have a good one, y'all. And definitely comment down below. Take care, y'all. Bye.